phase diagrams describe the different states and state changes that occur at various temperatures and pressures of different substances. So regions represent states and lines represent state changes. So from a liquid to a gas or a gas to a solid and so on. The triple point is the temperature slash pressure where all three states exist simultaneously. So believe it or not, there is a point for every substance at which it is a liquid and a gas and a solid all at the same time. It, it has to, there, it's a certain temperature and a certain pressure. So we'll look at different phase diagrams. Um, and for most substances, the freezing point increases as the pressure increases. Uh, something else that we have to consider before we look at these diagrams is called a supercritical fluid. So as a liquid is heated in a sealed container, more vapor collects, causing the pressure inside the container to rise, the density of the vapor to increase, and the density of the liquid to decrease. So um, you can imagine here you've got a liquid and a gas. You start to boil the liquid, and as you boil the liquid, the liquid starts to turn into a gas, and the liquid becomes less dense, and the gas becomes more dense, until you get to a point where this is both a liquid and a gas. And you might be thinking, well, doesn't it, did the whole thing just boil, and didn't it just turn into a gas? Well, the difference is that um, in a liquid, all of the particles are stuck together. So in a liquid, let me change this to red. In a liquid, all of these particles are stuck together. Right? And in a gas, all of the particles are broken apart. But as I start to heat the liquid and the gas, what happens is I start to get the situation where this happens. Where most of the particles are, they're all kind of broken apart, but they're not broken apart um, with one at a time. So a gas is where every particle is like a billiard ball, and they all bounce off of each other, and none of them have any stickiness whatsoever. In a liquid, they're all stuck together. In a supercritical fluid, they travel around, this is like a gas particle. Three particles get stuck together, so it's kind of like a really, really small drop of liquid, like a three particle drop of liquid, so it's really, really small. But that three particle, those three particles act as a gas. When this bumps into this, they'll bounce off of each other. But those three are stuck together. So a supercritical fluid is kind of like halfway between a gas and a liquid. It's both at the same time, because these are liquids because they're condensed, they're stuck to each other, but these small drops of liquid act as a gas as they, because they bounce off of each other. This is actually one state called a supercritical fluid. And the critical point is the temperature required to produce a supercritical fluid. The temperature required to produce a supercritical fluid is called the critical temperature, and the pressure at the critical temperature is called the critical pressure. And the critical temperature and pressure is called the critical point. Okay, so here is an example of a phase diagram. This is a phase diagram for water. So this whole light blue region is gas. Everywhere over here is gas. This um, darker blue is liquid, and the darkest blue is solid. On this axis down here, this is the temperature axis. So as I go this way, the temperature is increasing. So right here I'm below zero, and then I reach zero, 50, 100, 150, 200, and so on. So this way the temperature increases. Here is zero pressure, and as I go this way on this axis, the pressure is increasing. Um, so this diagram is showing me how, what state of matter, what phase the water is going to be in at a function of temperature and pressure. So we are very familiar with water as it changes from a solid we call ice to a liquid we call water to a gas we call steam. So we know all about water. What we know about water occurs right here on this red line. That's all your intuition can tell you about water. 
is at 760 torr, which is atmospheric pressure, the pressure that we live at right now under our ocean of air. Water is a solid, or H2O is a solid, until I hit 0 degrees C. And then it's a liquid until I reach 100 degrees C, and then it's a gas. That's what we know about water. That's what your intuition can tell you. But water actually can do way more than that if we change the pressure. So that's something that we haven't, that is, that you can't intuitively know because on Earth we only ever live at this one pressure, or maybe at a slightly le lower pressure if you live on a mountain. But if we go all the way down to zero pressure, or even if we go just slightly below atmospheric pressure, look what happens. If I'm down here, let's call this um, 380. If I'm at 380 torr, about half of atmospheric pressure, I'm a solid, solid water until you hit this point, which is, I don't know, maybe negative 20. And it, at negative 20 degrees C, ice turns into gas. And that's it. So if we were at a, a pressure that we can't reach on a mountain, it would be a, um, we'd be up in on an airplane, a really really high airplane. But if the pressure were so low, 380 torr, then water would turn from a solid to a gas, and it would never turn into a liquid. This is kind of like dry ice. Maybe you're familiar with dry ice. Dry ice starts off as a solid, and if you leave it out it just kind of evaporates and turns into a gas. You've never seen liquid dry ice. That's why they call it dry, because it goes from a solid to a gas. So if we change the pressure, then water does different things. If I change the pressure up here, look what happens. I, if I have solid water right here, at zero degrees C, it's, so it's ice, right? If I take ice, and this is, let's say, 600 torr. So at zero degrees C and 600 torr, I have some ice. If I start increasing the pressure on the ice, it's still zero degrees C, I'm not changing the temperature, I'm just squeezing the ice. Squeezing the ice, squeezing the ice, squeezing the ice, squeezing the ice. Right here, if I keep squeezing that zero degree ice, it turns into water. So look, right here, this is zero degrees. And if I increase the pressure on, on ice so that it's even greater than atmospheric pressure, then I can turn solid ice into water. This is still zero degree C. Zero degree C. But now it's liquid. And in order to turn that liquid back into solid ice, I'd have to get it down to like negative 5 or negative 10 degrees C at a very high pressure, right? Because this pressure is probably like 1,200 torr. So I'm really squeezing the ice. So as I change the, the pressure and the temperature of a substance, I change whether it's a solid or a liquid or a gas. But our intuition on Earth does not tell us very much because we're literally only looking at a slice. On every phase diagram, we, we only know that substance in this one slice, in this one pressure. So when I go from a solid to a gas, that's called sublimation. So this line right here is the sublimation curve, going from a solid to a gas. When I go from a solid to a liquid, that's called uh, melting. When I go from a liquid to a solid, that's called fusion. So this is either the melting line or the fusion line. Melting, solid to liquid. Fusion, liquid to solid. Um, vaporization, also boiling, also called boiling, is when I go from a liquid to a gas. So the line that separates liquid and gas is the vaporization curve. When I go from a liquid to a gas, I vaporize. From a gas to a liquid, I condense. If I go from a solid to a gas, it's sublimation. From a gas to a solid is deposition. And finally, right here, at this point, look, the line stops. So this is the critical point. And when the line stops, look what happens. Here is pure liquid, 
and down here below the line is pure gas. I have liquid, gas, two different, two different regions, two different regions, two different regions. After the critical point, there's only one region. The liquid and the gas have become the same thing. There is no longer a boundary between liquid and gas. So at the critical point, I now have a supercritical fluid where there is only one state at that point. So we can look at some different phase diagrams. Oh, I forgot to mention the triple point. Here, the triple point is where all three states exist at the same time. So the triple point for water is at 0 0.01 degrees C and 0 0.006 atmospheres, so very low pressure and almost zero degrees Celsius. At that point, solid, liquid, and gas all exist at the same time, and we call that the triple point. Um, here is the triple point for iodine. Here's the critical point for iodine. Here's the vaporization curve. So you can see the shapes of these lines are different. Here's carbon dioxide. The shapes of the lines are slightly different for each different substance. But each different substance has a phase diagram that tells us when it's a solid, when it's a liquid, and when it's a gas as a function of its temp temperature and pressure. So water is different than most other substances. Water is a liquid at room temperature, even though it is a very small molecule. So other molecules that are similar in size, they're gases. Um, the reason that water is a liquid is because of its hydrogen bonding. Water is an excellent solvent, so it can dissolve many substances. Um, these other similar molecules cannot. They're not as good at dissolving things. Again, that's because water is so polar. Water has a very high specific heat, so it can absorb a lot of energy before its temperature changes. That's why here on the coast, it doesn't get too hot in the summer and it doesn't get too cold in the winter. Because in the summer, all that extra heat goes into the water. The water absorbs it. And in the winter, instead of getting cold, the water releases a lot of heat that it had stored during the summer. The water releases the heat back into the air during the winter and it keeps it kind of warm, warmer than it is inland anyway. So that's because water has a very high specific heat. Um, and water is also very strange because it expands when it freezes. Most substances, when they turn from a liquid into a solid, they become more condensed. The density increases. But for water, the density decreases, which is a very strange thing. So here are the boiling points of some other substances. So water has a very, very high boiling point um, given other compounds that are similar to it. So here are lots of other compounds that are about the same size and about the same mass as water. But these compounds, with the exception of HF, which still boils at about 20 or 30 degrees C, none of them come anywhere close to water, which boils at 100 degrees C. So those hydrogen bonds in water, four hydrogen bonds per water molecule, make those water molecules really, really sticky. So it's really hard to break those hydrogen bonds, and it's really hard to boil water.